What is up awesome peeps? Brett McCluskey here with Electric Friday Views and today we are reviewing the BPM Imports F950 Fat Tire Electric Trike right here. This thing is a fantastic entry level electric trike. We're gonna dive into the specs, but first let's roll the B-roll. All right, awesome peeps. Again, this is the BPM Imports F950 Fat Tyler to Trike, a really good entry level trike right here. This thing starts for 2050 USD, $2,050 USD, which is gonna be more than the entry level um, electric bike, but for electric trikes, the three wheelers, that's kind of like the entry level kind of price point. Trikes, they just run a little bit more expensive. That's just the name of the game if you want something like this, a bigger vehicle, the extra wheel, the extra weight, the extra material, that's just, that's just how it goes. So with BPM Imports, uh, these guys do have a one year warranty on the battery for this bike right here. And then I think that's a 90 day warranty for the parts. You can upgrade the warranty to one year for the parts as well if you want, I believe for an extra $99 if you do feel like you need that. But as it stands, um, you know, out of the box, it is gonna be a one year warranty for the battery, 90 days for the part. So let's dive in to the specs on this bike right here, or shall we say the trike. We'll start with the motor. This is gonna be a pretty powerful Buffang 750 watt motor up in the front with about 80 newton meters of torque. So it's actually a pretty peppy, pretty powerful motor and exactly what you want for a trike. You want the more powerful motors because you're gonna be carrying more weight. You're gonna have, um, just more to more to move more weight to move you know you want that extra power um, and this motor right here brings this trike up to a top speed of about 24 miles per hour with the cadence sensing pedal assist which you can see right here it's going to be a 12 magnet cadence sensor or you can use the throttle right here on the right hand side you can reach that top speed with either one of those which will make this a class three electric bike out of the box but i believe you can actually turn the you can crank the top speed down if you want to, to max out 20 miles per hour if you want to keep this as a class two if you have regulations where you live. So something to keep in mind there with that. The battery for this is going to be a 48 volt, 17 amp hour battery, which is definitely a bigger than average battery. And again, exactly what you want, exactly what you need for a trike that's going to draw more juice to get this thing moving because again, it is just so much bigger. You're gonna be carrying weight with it. So you want a bigger battery. Max range for this is gonna be about 40 miles with this battery and with this motor setup. Again, that is just an estimate um, with ideal conditions. If you ride it like I do, full throttle, max pedal assist mode, you're gonna get probably around maybe half that for real world range. So again, just kind of one of those, one of those specs to keep in mind. Now this battery right here is gonna be called a Silverfish style battery. It attaches right to the back of the seat post. And one of the issues, or I guess, yeah, one of the issues with these kinds of batteries is it can be difficult to remove them. They are locking and removable, but in order to get this battery out, you'll see it actually is gonna hit the saddle right there, the top of that saddle. So in order to get this battery out, I have to take off the whole saddle and seat post and then I can get this battery out of that lock position right there. So it only takes a few seconds, not a big deal. It is a quick release saddle. So uh, yeah, not a big deal, but something to keep in mind right there. For braking on this, this is gonna have mechanical disc brakes, which kind of makes sense because again, it is kind of more of an entry level uh, trike. So you're not gonna find the hydraulic brakes on this. 160 millimeter rotors for the front mechanical disc brake. And we also have mechanical disc brakes on both wheels in the rear, which is definitely what you want. Some trikes will only have one disc brake in the rear. And then what happens is when you hit the rear brakes, because there's only one of them, the trike wants to like list to the side, you know, and it makes braking uneven. Um, you do not get that with this trike because there are brakes on each tire. So very good stuff right there. 
stopping power on this, even though the arm mechanical disc brakes is plenty, more than enough. Um, the, bra the brake levers also have motor inhibitors built in. So whenever I depress the brake levers, it's going to automatically cut power to the motor, which is just gonna make sure I have the shortest possible stopping distance. It's like a safety measure. You're never fighting against the motor when you stop, which is very, very good. You'll notice here, this does have a front headlight. It's kind of <laughs> zip tied to the side there. Right here on the arch of the fork, um, this front suspension, that's where you attach the headlight. The screw that it came with was really, really soft metal. I ended up stripping it, um, so my fault. I just didn't realize how just how soft the metal is. So if you do want to put this front headlight on, headlight on the front fender that it comes with, um, it also does come with a front basket. If you do want that, it's one of those baskets that you know it sits right there, and it connects by clamps to the fork. So not the best style of basket, but it's kind of just like a standard aftermarket one that you can put on any bike. But um, if you do need extra storage capacity, that basket is there for you and then you can really load this thing up. But back to the this front arch here, just be careful when you're screwing in the headlight uh, not to do what I did and strip that screw. Uh, otherwise you can't really use the front headlight. So yeah. Now the suspension here is kind of a no-name generic suspension. Um, spring suspension, about 80 millimeters of travel. It does have preload adjust which is nice, actually, I was kind of surprised to see that. And it does have lockout right here on this side as well, so you can actually lock the suspension if you want. So, some options there, which is nice. One of the things I like about this trike and all trikes in general, just how stable they are, how approachable, how easy they are to ride, especially at slower speeds. They're just so stable, especially I like trikes that have that um, kind of step through design, that really low, that low sweeping top tube, um, because it makes it really easy to just get on and off the bike and it allows you to keep your feet flat on the ground, which gives you just that like a comfort feeling, you know what I'm saying? Like the bike stands up by itself, you can stand up when you're at a stop. It's just, it's, it's kind of a nice feeling if you're looking for something that's approachable and stable. There is also a seat post suspension that this does come with, just gives you a little bit extra of a cushioning um, when you're riding this thing. And the saddle itself has springs in it, which is nice. It's just another little way to add some suspension. So overall, this is a pretty, pretty soft ride if you are riding on the streets. Can you go off-road with this? I would say yes. I mean, look, it's a fat tire vehicle. Fat tires are definitely better for off-road. It does have suspension. It's not really an off-road machine, though. It's just not, it's just not really built for that. Um, but you can take it on light trails if you want. So yeah, now this bike right here, all in all weighs about 75 pounds, which is more than average for uh, electric bike, but for a trike is actually about the average weight here. And it kind of makes sense because this does, it's look, you can just see it's just so much bigger than a regular bike. It does have that front suspension, the big, the big motor, the big battery, an extra wheel, 75 pounds, not really surprising that that's what this thing weighs in at. And back to the tires here real quick. Four inch fat tires are great, man. They also add kind of another layer of suspension because there's so much air volume in these tires, it makes for a pretty cush ride. Um, and if you are going over grass, sand, snow, for whatever reason, or any sort of loose terrain, these tires are gonna really excel at just kind of keeping you afloat up and over the ground instead of sinking in. Um, one of the biggest benefits of fat tires right there. Now, these are Kenda tires, which are kind of, they're kind of known for being pretty thin. So. Look, just be careful with these tires. I would really recommend putting some slime in these things just to help with puncture protection because there's no puncture protection liner in these and they are pretty thin tires. So throwing slime in there is great for, you know, if you get just like a little puncture, you know, it's gonna seal it up really quick, really quickly for you. Here's a quick shot of the, uh, the rear basket right here. Really, really big, plenty of room in this thing. You can just store a lot <laughs> in that if you want to. Underneath, we're gonna have the Shimano turny derailleur, that little piece right there. Again, entry level component, but that's okay. That's what we're expecting because this is an entry level bike. Um, and we're gonna have a Shimano SIS index thumb shifter right here on the right hand side, um, seven speed. And what's interesting is you kind of, in top, this thing is geared kind of low, which I think is good. So when you are pedaling in top gear, um, you kind of start beating eggs around 16 or 17 miles an hour, even though it's got 24, hour, 24 mile per hour top speed, you can easily reach with the throttle. And that low gearing actually makes sense because if you do have this thing weighed down, you're not gonna be going the top speed 24 miles per hour, you're gonna be going slower. If you have hills, you're gonna really appreciate that lower gearing, you know what I'm saying? Um, so kind of a, actually, I think a good call here on BPM's part, so I really do, really do like that. Let's head over to the display and the handlebars here. 
So with the handlebars themselves, you'll see we do have a variable angle or adjustable stem here, which is kind of cool. So you can raise or lower the, the handlebars. You can make it for a more of an upright, relaxed riding position or kind of more of a down and aggressive, more stable riding position, just whatever you want. Over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna have the independent button pad, up arrow, down arrow, power button. And then right here, we have a little horn. And then in the middle is where we're gonna have the buffeting display right here. So to turn this thing on, it's gonna be a long press of the power button and it will come to life. Top left, you have a four bar battery indicator. Um, not my favorite, I prefer, prefer a percentage indicator or at least like a, like maybe like a 10 bar battery indicator just to give you, give you a more precise feedback of how much battery you have left. But um, not a big deal. And one of the things, what I love most about the buffeting displays is man, they are so easy to read in direct sunlight. You never have a problem reading these displays, which is something that you run into a lot with some of the other displays. So I really, really, really like the, the buffeting displays. They are very, very good stuff here. Uh, right here on the left, we're gonna have the pedal assist level. It goes all the way down to zero, up to five, I believe. Two, three, four, five, yeah, up to five. In the middle, we're gonna have current speed, uh, distance traveled, what is this, temperature, how much watts you're spitting out from the motor, and then if you tap the power button, it'll switch to an odometer. Tap it again, it'll go to voltage and max speed right here. Uh, this is a better, this is actually a better way to determine how much juice you have left in the battery. You can see how much voltage directly right here, which is way more precise than the ind battery indicator. So if you do want to really check exactly how much battery you have, boom, use that right here. Hit the power button one more time, and it goes back to distance traveled right there. So that's how the display works. And then you, again, here is the, um, the SIS index thumb shifter right here, and then the throttle on the right-hand side. So yeah, sweet ride, guys. Really cool entry-level trike, and honestly, it's fun. One of my favorite things about reviewing trikes is, it's not in there right now, but um, the, the back here is so spacious that I can throw both my backpacks, all my gear in there. These two big backpacks right here, I'm gonna go walk over real quick and show you. I can throw all this gear in here and still have plenty of room left over, and that's really, like I was talking about, that's what this thing is all about, man. It's about being able to have tons of storage capacity. You can throw, look at that, look at how nasty big that backpack is, all that stuff. You can throw all that stuff in there. And like I said, if you do want that front basket, you can have that too. So yeah, all right, look, we've talked about this long enough. I think it's time to take this F950 out for a test ride and see it in action. So here we go.
All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the review of the BPM Imports F950 Fat Tire Electric Trike. Again, in summer, this thing starts for $2,050 USD. 2050 usd which is like we talked about more than the standard electric bike as far as entry level goes but it is about the right price for an entry level fat tire trike they just run a little bit more money and like we talked about this is a great choice for an entry level fat tire trike this is going to be fantastic for those people who are looking to get into personal electric vehicles who need something that is a stable platform look like we talked about trikes man this one and all trikes they are so stable at slow speeds they're very approachable of course the higher speeds you go the less stable they become but lower speeds these things are like a rock they just they don't tip over you can sit uh, perfectly still with them you can put your feet flat on the ground while uh, standing over the top tube because we got that that sloped down that sloped downward top tube just a really approachable really easy to ride trike here and the storage capacity so this is going to work great for people who want something that you can actually carry a lot of gear with you. If you're going to the grocery store, you're having a big trip where you're getting a lot of stuff, that rear rack right there has tons of storage capacity. There's also that front rack we talked about. If you do want to install that for even more storage capacity, 300 pound rider weight max limit, an extra 230 pounds or something like that for the total storage capacity. I mean, you can really put a lot of stuff in this bike um, and that's what it's geared for. That's the whole kind of modality or the philosophy of use for this trike and really for all trikes in general. So awesome peeps, I hope you enjoyed this review of the BPM Imports. F950 fat tire electric trike. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.